Featherstone Rovers against Bradford is always a great contest and the fact that so many former Rovers players and the coach Peter Fox are now at Northern gives it added spice. Post Office Road is no place for the faint-hearted. Derek Fox is making his first return to the ground where he made his name. Fox's move to Bradford still hurts the Rovers fans. But now they have a new hero. Eva Rapati grabbed a hat-trick when the big league cameras last visited Featherstone. Carl Gibson's playing his fifth game at fullback. At 31, he's found a new lease of life. And another Carl, Bradford's Furbank, scored a try when Northern beat Featherston in September. The Rovers will ignore him at their peril. Match referee today is Robert Connolly from Wigan, the 34-year-old who started in 1990-91 with his brother John, his twin brother, who is the referee of the year. This is the top match of the day in the Stones Villa Championship. It should be a battle royal. There's no love lost between these two clubs. So closely connected because of all the transfers from Featherstone to Bradford. Hold on to your hats. This will be a cracker. This is the Featherstone team. Gibson, Butt, Callum, Rapati, Simpson, Maloney and Daunt. And up front it's Malloy, Gunn the captain, Casey, the two prices and Brendan Tutor. And the substitutes, the two former Castleford players, Graham Southernwood and Neil Roebuck. It's Featherstone who are in possession at the moment. On the last tackle. And the ball with Carl Gibson, unusually playing in the full-back role, but playing so very, very well. It goes right down the other end of the field to the Kiwi, David Watson, his opposite number. And immediately the first tackle by a Featherstone player on a Bradford player. It's high, it's penalty Bradford. Little doubt about it, you can see Watson all the time in the world and then watch for crunch time. Penalty then from Derek Fox, who got quite a hot reception here when he led this team out. Watson, Cordell, Shelford, Dio Powell, Kevy, Summers and Fox the captain. And Grayson, Clark, Hamer, Powell, Dixon and Furbank. And on the bench it's the experienced head of David Heron and 26-year-old Adam Greenwood. This is Furbank. Good driving run from Furbank. Watson is the dummy half. Fox to Dixon. And was that high from Tutor? Not according to the referee. Long ball there. And Fairbank tooted into it. This is going to be a big one. The Kiwi International is all fire and brimstone. Look at that. Swinging straight in. Hit the shoulder. But it was after that. Little bit of argy bargy gave away the silly penalty oh they're both fired up for this one absolutely Derek Fox the Bradford Northern captain knows every blade of grass on this post office road turf this is John Hamer with the drive 10 years at Bradford Northern Clark another former Featherstone Rovers player now Paul Gration good tackling though it's Clark back to Dixon again Dixon and Tutor again collide Watch out for that battle between those two. Bradford so close. Clark fires out the ball to Fox. Looping pass to Watson. He finds Furbank. Furbank gets the ball away. First try to Darrell Shelford. Great start for Bradford. It all came about the result of that penalty. And it's Shelford with the first try. Super play by... Bradford they kept the ball alive long ball from Fox again look how Watson's timed into it but you can see how much the Featherston defense held back but what a great pass from Carl Fairbank super play Shelford in for the first try but it was the two long balls now Watson was stood still and Fairbank goes through the tackle look at that pass one-handed but I'm afraid the Featherston defense was caught napping they did not move up quick enough. Great try. Daryl Shelford, that's three in three matches for the New Zealander. And now Derek Fox with a conversion attempt. It's a great kick. Big smile from Derek Fox. And Bradford ahead by six points to nil. You can see that there's one man held back there. It should have been in a straight line. And that is the reason why the overlap came. 
he committed himself there Fairbank superb support play what an opening for Bradford just the start that Northern wanted just the start the Rovers didn't want here's Roy Powell he will drive it back up towards the Featherstone Chasers this match of course with so much in it these two clubs great run from Summers Featherstone have lost players to Bradford they've lost their coach and of course the biggest star of them all Paul Newlove should have been in Sydney with the Sevens this weekend but instead elected not to travel and has been banned from this match which really has annoyed Bradford and it's annoyed Featherstone too because they would like him to have played of course they will they've lost Pearson from their lineup he's been one of their star players well, they're one man down also as well as Bradford Rugby League of course not allowing Newell there you can see on the replay but no doubt about that Brendan Tutor right arm interfering they've fired up a Featherstone but I'm afraid they've been famous for their defence but they really let themselves down on that occasion to allow Bradford to score Bradford who won the first match between these two in September it's a lovely run from Watson he offloads to Powell and Bradford Northern have started here like a house on fire Trevor Clark the dummy half to Derek Fox he finds Watson again Watson one-handed and wasn't the best pass in the world and he was offside was Watson when he picked that up off the knees of Paul Dixon what a relief there for Featherson that man the fullback Dave Watson in scintillating form gets a ball there that should have been taken bad mistake from Dixon and you can see the man who passed the ball which was that man Watson stood in front offside has to be a penalty well Featherston have hardly got going have they but what can they do here now this is Gary Price that was Gary S there's a Gary Price in 11 and a Gary Price in 12 it's always a nightmare really to distinguish the two for you but we'll do our best this is Rapati fierce challenge on Rapati from Dio Powell gun from the acting halfback position the ball just squirms from his grasp and here goes Dixon again good tackle there from John Hamer the Bradford prop making that ball spill out that's a mistake from Gratian he just dropped it and Featherston have it back with Rapati there's an overlap here for Simpson lovely dummy from Rapati he should have passed it out wide took them all on and the tackle was good but Featherston have got the penalty for holding down and he's going to have a word with Cordell I think this could be five minutes ten minutes should I say in the sin bin he's gone a professional foul you can see the winger Cordell not allowing the Kiwi Ivor Rapati any opportunity there and that is good refereeing he's made his intentions known Robert Connolly the referee quickly went into the back pocket professional foul 10 minutes in the sin bin Gerald Cordell Welsh international on the transfer list and now just cooling his heels he will reflect on that for the next 10 minutes penalty coming up then from Francis Maloney back in the side after missing the last four seven tries as well as those 16 goals this season for Maloney the kick looks good we're right behind that we follow it all the way and it's right over the black dot Featherston back in it just what the doctor ordered really So Derek Fox to restart for Bradford Northern. And here's Gary Price. That's Gary H. The man who was signed from Wakefield Trinity in the summer. Scuttling run from Ikram Butt and a fierce challenge by Fox. Helped out by Carl Furbank. Featherston just starting to find their feet. They were hit by a whirlwind, weren't they, at the start of this? 
He's a key man for Featherston, the prop forward, Steve Malloy, in excellent play. He really is in top four, and that's a great break. Gary Price, he has the centre outside him. That's Matt Callan, and that's a good tackle from David Watson. But how close are Featherston to their first try? Gunn trying to keep the ball alive, decided instead to take the tackle. It was on the last one, so it's the turnover to Bradford. While Gerald Cordell is in the sin bin, Paul Dixon has replaced him on the wing, the second rower. That's an unusual move by Peter Fox. Question is, of course, is Dixon injured? He seems to be limping. Fox gets the ball away, meanwhile, to Furbank, surrounded by Featherston jerseys. Well, we're talking about how the importance of the defence was. Featherston a little bit lax in the early stages, but we've just seen that Featherston have made two clean breaks. Bradford have got to work hard in that department too. Kebby was the acting halfback. Fox just dropped the ball over the top and into touch. Good kicking by Fox. He was booed roundly as he emerged from the dressing room. As you mentioned earlier, Eddie, that uh, Derek Fox, of course, played here for many years, knows every blade of grass on this ground. But rather more than a, just a warm reception when he ran out. But he's a general behind this Bradford side, that there's no doubt. It's Featherston who are in possession, this is Maloney. He spills it, Bradford have it back, that was great tackling. The referee says he will play the first knock-on. There was one either side. This will be Bradford's head and feet. Well, it really wasn't on, was it? When you're in your own quarter, safety first is the key. And I'm afraid he knows it. Should have gone to ground with that football. Maloney in the side for Martin Pearson, who is with Great Britain in the World Sevens. Incidentally, they've lost their two matches in the tournament. Meanwhile, that's put to the back of the mind here as... Dixon tries to make inroads, but another big hit by Tutor, and Dixon stays down, he's hurt. That looked high to me. Here's Tutor. Oh, it's right over the top of the shoulder. Right into the jaw. I'm not surprised Tutor is walking around in Disneyland. Well, it could get a little tasty, this. A little? Malloy with that run. This is it from Butt. Surrounded, Gratian brings him down. It's all action, isn't it? it? Really is. Good darting run from Gunn, the captain of Featherston, former Leeds player, the hooker. Dixon still doesn't know where he is. Ball into the corner. Dio Powell content to just let it run dead. Paul Dixon, meanwhile, receiving treatment. And David Heron is being warmed up to replace him. What a fierce opening this has been. Now here's Watson. New Zealand international fullback. David Watson, 15 caps for his country. He was ill on the journey last week to Barrow and missed his first game of the season. Fully recovered now. Well, it's amazing. Bradford scored their first try with the ball going out wide. Two long balls from the two halfbacks, Summers and Fox. That looked a forward pass, but Powell will accelerate into the Featherston half of the field. Screaming for the forward pass on the terraces here. But Bradford are allowed to continue the movement with Fox to Watson. He misses out. Summers and finds Furbank, whose pass bounced off the shoulder of Shelford. That must be a knock-on. Surely that was a knock-on there. The ball coming from Fairback onto Shelford. Gratian with a little trickle of blood from the nose, just packing down in the front row for Bradford. It's Featherston's head and feed. Daunt gets it, finds Maloney. He finds Gibson. Rapati is there, and he saw a bit of space ahead of him. But Gibson thought better of it and took the tackle. Well, you can see the heavy conditions right down the middle of this pitch. A lot of sand being laid upon it. 
you want to use the speed merchants let's get it out wide Richard Gunn tackled by Roy Powell handling it as just four apiece Casey Malloy on the charge Fairbank wraps him up Featherston in the danger zone with Dawn to Maloney. Dawn takes over again. Good movement from Featherston. Gibson. Oh, he released that pass brilliantly to Butt. Butt out wide to Callum. Callum trying to get in the corner. Tosses the ball back in field to Butt. It's a great try, that. That's a super try from Ikram Butt. A try now in each of his last three for Ikram Butt, the winger. Try number ten. And they don't come much better than that one. It's all about keeping the ball alive, but wonderful play from the centre, Matt Callan. The run round with Maloney, and then Daunt, the long ball out wide. Gibson came through, they kept it alive, but didn't he do well here? But then on to Callan. Now look how he goes outside, he knows he's got nowhere to go, he's looking for that inside pass. He takes the gamble, the bounce is superb, and the man who was involved earlier, Ikram Butt, finishes off for the four points. It's all about keeping it alive. It's all about support play. The bounce was just right. Super stuff. Ikram Butt, the man who was signed by Featherston Rovers for Peter Fox, former Great Britain Colt International. He grabbed 17 tries last season as Featherston came out of Division 2. He's in double figures now. And Francis Maloney has already kicked one. If he kicks this, Rovers have the lead. They have the lead. 8 6 Featherston Rovers. They've done the run round, and then you can see two players going for one man. Ikram Butt comes straight in. That's what created the overlap. Look at him go there. Now, the quick play of the ball keeps it alive. Then out to Callan. He does exceptionally well here. Long ball back inside. Support. Great stuff. Bradford Northern, meanwhile, have made a change. David Heron has come on after that try, and there he is in the thick of the action. First tackle from him on Gary H. Price. And it's Paul Dixon who has gone off, and the Featherston Rovers man then lost the ball. Hit from Butt. The hero a moment ago, now the villain with that silly mistake. This is Summers. Watson is the dummy half. Finds Powell. Gets away from the clutches of Malloy. Callum's tackle was high. Well, he's got to do something about this, Robert Connolly. We've seen so many high tackles, and yet we've seen one guy go to the sin bin just for holding a player down. Confusing? Yeah, of course it is. But get the message across. Best way, never mind giving them a tick off. Get that little square yellow thing out. Get them on the bench. Matt Calland has now been involved for the last seven. The former Rochdale man and he has conceded the penalty Derek Fox elects to kick for territory rather than kick for goal Bradford playing with the slope in this first half of Post Office Road Hamer takes it on for them trailing now 8-6 Gratian Clark switches the direction of the attack Summers to Watson Busy from Watson finds Shelford. Summers in at dummy half. Hamer, a drive to the line from Hamer. Halted by Malloy, Gary S. Price and Casey. Can they stop Gratian? Yes, they can, but only just Bradford so close. Less than a metre to the line. Fox to Watson. Oh, that's a great one from Watson. He ran 20 metres for that. He knew it was on the cards, and so did Fox. Spun the ball out quickly, try. 
Watch for foot. Watch for Watson. He's put his arm up. He knows he's coming for it. It was a delayed pass. It was right on the borderline. You see him grabbing back for it. He nearly overran it. But as far as the referee Robert Connolly is concerned, that is a fair try. That is excellent thinking from the fullback Dave Watson. The Kiwi raised his arm before this, said, I'm coming for it. The Ferguson defence was expecting a forward to come charging through. The fullback make the Coupe de Gras. Super! And Derek Fox adds the extras. Bradford have the lead again. It's swinging one way and the other. It's a seesaw match already, this. You're watching Sky Sports. When... This is the Welshman, Gerald Cordell. He's already had ten minutes in the sin bin. And Neil Summers. Gibson walking all over the back of Summers. There'll be a few bruises from the studs there, I fancy. Casey's tackle on John Hamer. Clark the dummy half. Fairbank. Gets the ball away to Roy Powell. Powell takes the tackle from Price the first. Interesting Powell. There is uh, three former St. John Fisher amateurs on this field. Roy Powell's one of them. Derek Fox is another. And young Francis Maloney is the third. Fox under pressure from Tutor. That was a great chase by the Bradford loose forward. This is Price the second. It's getting to the players. And look at that possession. Featherson, 57.6, well in control, but Bradford are in the front where it counts most. Malloy taking Featherston into the 20 meter zone. Good brave run from the prop forward. Gun directing operations, pointed right, came left. Gibson, was that a little knock on? Yes, it was. Lack of concentration at the play of the ball. Both sides are trying to do everything at 100 miles an hour. You can see that Gibson is more intent to look to where he was about to pass before he took control of that football. The rain's starting to team down now. Watson, there's a long ball from Summers. There are four men out there. One of them is Powell. Good tackle by Ikram Butt. Powell was looking to make it up to the halfway line. He was stopped 20 metres away. But this is Shelford, who now crosses into Featherston territory. Well, there's far too many players from both sides interested in to prove how tough they are instead of getting on with the football. It's very scrappy at the moment. Fairbank straightens it up, finds Summers. Gary H. Price, Price the second with that tackle. This is Cornell. Explosive from Cordell. Price again doing the tackling stint. Along with Tuta, Dio Powell. Fox flips it over the top. And Rapati's there, but that's a lovely chase from Fox. Good football there from Fox, also equal to the task with Rapati. But what a great finish. And only a little fella, but my word, isn't he strong, Derek Fox? The, the power in the legs then. Certainly is. Pile driving through the little pocket dynamo. Cost £140,000 to leave Featherston and join Bradford. Bradford back in possession with Powell. This now is Clark and Gratian. As well, finds Hamer. Still going, Hamer, looking round for the support. None there other than Clark, and he was on the wrong side of him. Now Heron, Heron turns the ball back inside, Watson continues the movement, so too does Fox, Fairbank brings it back towards the heavy traffic. This is where Fox has to put in the little kicks now. Powell deciding to go on his own, that's the Featherston line, Simpson and Gunn just hold him up. Fox spins the ball into the arms of Heron who drops it and Malloy went down and caught one in here. Heron was going for that with a boot and I think he caught Malloy's head. Well, they're just taking the wrong options in my book. Bradford in a great position on the last tackle trying to elect to get the ball out and bring it forward onto it. 
when really, when you've got such a talented player like Derek Fox, the ball has to be put to the boot. It was Malloy's head that felt the boot then, but thankfully he's all right. Trevor Clark, the Bradford Northern number nine there, he looks all wound up for this. He's a former Featherstone Rovers player too, of course. Here's Rapati. Now, was that high from Powell? No. Play on. Simpson at acting halfback. Gary Price, the number 12. Stopped by Heron. It looked high. Connolly says play on. This is getting to look like a coconut shot. That's a lovely kick downfield by Maloney. Use a bit of common sense there. Let's get out of here. That is a great kick from the number six. It all really boils down to the fact that the team that starts taking control, getting back into the basics, trying to create that opening out wide. Long ball. Feel confident. At the moment, they just want to prove that they're tough. We're in the last five minutes of this first half and Summers with the run. Almost a cup tie atmosphere here at Post Office Road today. So much local pride at stake. Watson dancing, jinking, then the ball comes out the back door to Furbank. He helps it on to Powell. And Powell, well, we've said it so often this season. He only knows one way, and that's straight forward. Now Furbank. Clark at dummy half. Fox. Summers. Shelford and still Bradford in their own half of the field good defence this from Featherstone now Kebby enters Rovers territory surely someone's going to use some tactics rather than the one out there's the kick from Fox it's into the corner it will run dead though it's a very short narrow in goal area here at Post Office Road Gibson knew as soon as that hit the turf it was going dead I know one thing both coaches will have plenty to say at the half-time break. Sort things out. This game is there for the winning. Take control, that's what it's all about. We have not seen it. Maloney and Daunt should be doing it for Featherston. Taking control, making the link. Whereas Bradford, Summers and Fox, they have to start working hard together. There's Daunt and here's Tutor. Tutor too can be a match winner for Featherston Rovers. He really can. Rapati. Daunt. There's the kick at last, but straight into the arms of Powell. Gets away from two, but can't get away from Daunt, and Simpson has him second bite. Well, at least it was different from Brett Daunt, the little chip over. The only trouble was that Bradford at that occasion, not only one sweeper, they had three. Little drummer kick forward, finds touch just over the halfway line from Summers. Even so, that is good thinking. No point in barging your way downfield when you can just drop a kick it through. Intelligent kick from Summers. There's four points between these two sides at the end of this first half here. Of 32 games played between the two in the last 20 years, incidentally. Featherston have won 12 and Northern 20. It's Northern who lead at this stage, but Maloney is the man in possession of the ball. Casey the party did well kept the movement going Dawn finds Price Dawn once more Malloy former Warrington and Leeds prop forward Steve Malloy Dawn the Australian Tutor the Kiwi Ikram Butt Price, Callum, the shout was from Gibson for Callum to keep hold of it, he's through Kebby, he's got Gibson, Gibson, just held up short but he dropped it didn't he? Oh the chance was there, Callum did exceptionally well in and out and Gibson trying to step, lost possession, Watson did well, perhaps he collided with the football, it was a super tackle much better play from Featherston. they brought Tutor back on the angle going back to the blind side then got it out wide 
been impressed with his centre Matt Callum for Featherston playing strongly now Shelford the tall centre for Bradford I must say Carl Gibson Steve oh, appeared then to be doing the uh, dying swan already wasn't he he was about two or three yards short and it looked like he was preparing to dive over the line and lost it there's the half time siren Bradford Northern holds sway at the end of 40 minutes by 12 points to 8 Ikram Butt scored a tremendous try in that first half Derek Fox back on his own stomping ground largely been ignored by this Bradford side in many ways I'm sure he'll be involved second half more you're watching Sky Sports. Second half then underway here at Post Office Road. This top match in the Stones bit of championship today. Great local derby between Featherston and Bradford Northern. Lots of ill feeling off the field. Quite a bit of ill feeling on it in that first 40 minutes too. Referee Bob Connolly has been working hard to keep the two sides apart. But Bradford it is who hold the advantage just four points to the good and Bradford have their sights on their first title of course in 13 years so they need to keep that going in the second 40 if they can meanwhile play is brought back for this knock on by Carl Fairbank well it looked quite clear didn't it Leo Casey was involved Fairbank a little bit confused by it all, so the referee Robert Connolly looked at his touch touch. Touch it says knock on. So it's Featherston who had the possession from the scrum with Gibson, grounded by Derek Fox. Daunt gets him out of the way, goes into dummy half. Here's Tutor who bounces off Trevor Clark, but can't get away from next to in Heyman and Powell. Gun is there, so too is Malloy. Malloy takes the tackle. That is the direction that Featherston are going towards those Bradford posts so close Gunn at acting halfback it's now with Dawn here comes Casey tries to get the ball away the movement continues last tackle here for Featherston will they try the kick yes they will from Dawn it beats everybody except Powell and then he clears it into one of the gardens behind the ground here take no chances he didn't know it was around him he did the right thing didn't bother turning round left foot bang straight over so it's Derek Fox with the drop out from under the sticks good length on it too 10 meters into the Bradford half of the Featherston half of the field this is Gibson pitch is getting a little bit tacky now the rain has been falling for a good half hour or so conditions anything but ideal here's Daunt who has been singled out by Peter Fox apparently at half time as one of the danger men in this Featherston side there he is again now Maloney Maloney gets the ball away to Price Price is grounded by Gratian it's been all Featherston started his second half Casey Casey taking them on, looking for the line, Casey and so close, on the last tackle, Featherston. Gunn switches the direction of play, and it was a good job, but Heron was there, just shuttled across to keep Maloney out. And a beautiful low, low tackle from Neil Summers. Maloney has got a lot of strength, just yards short there. Dio Powell skipping away from the challenges who couldn't get away from Leo Casey. Clark to Fox, now Shelford. Well, you can see how the ground is cutting up now. The rain just pelting down. Lovely run through the mud by Fox, up to the halfway line, and grounded by Daunt. Clark wants to get on with it quickly. He finds Watson, who in turn finds Heron. Now Gratian. Last tackle for Bradford. They're going uphill, second half, of course. Fox hoists the high kick. Fairbanks after it. Oh, Gibson drops it, and a good job that Gibson got there too. And just swung the leg around, I think, and knocked it dead. 
Little bit of luck there, and I don't think he realised it. It came off the back of his arm. He had no idea there, but what a great kick from Derek Fox. That's what we were calling for in the first half. Quite obvious, both coaches, especially Peter Fox and Bradford, said, in these wet conditions, let's give it some air. And the run from Furbank that caused the panic for Gibson. He must have heard him coming a good while away. Meanwhile, Watson is claiming he's been clouted with the elbow. Wonder if he's got a case. Tit for tat there, isn't it? He felt it though, must have got a bang in the throat. Here's Heron, just delaying at the right moment. Heron bringing Summers in. Desperate defence from Featherstone to keep Bradford out. Fox switches the play back inside to Powell. Powell, remember that try scored against Leeds when we were at Valley Parade for the match there. Couldn't get through on that occasion. Clark to Heron to Kebby. Kebby has been very quiet. This is the last tackle. Fox clips one over the top and it spins off the turf and runs dead. Just a little bit too strong, but they are the tactics. That's what he's needed. Anything can happen as we've just seen previous when Carl Gibson made a real meal of trying to take the bomb. And in these conditions, anything can happen. The driving rain. Yeah, the rain is getting heavier and heavier as we watch. Gunn trying to slug it out downfield. Meanwhile, David Watson, who received treatment, is off, and young, well, 26 year old Adam Greenwood is on. He's young to Steve Horn me. Ikram Butt applies the brakes, comes back this way to Daunt. Daunt, covered by Fox. It wasn't in the throat, it was in the nose that he got the elbow. Could be a blood bin substitution then, that. High kick, no one wants it. Gibson says he'd fancy it and drops it and gives it straight to Shelford. Well, that was amazing then. They just held off to Bradford. Gibson, if he'd have taken that, he had a clear run. Clear run. Hamer. Fairbank. Good run from him. Prop forward, of course, for his country in that series against the New Zealanders in the autumn. But loose forward for his club, Bradford Northern. Fox. Here's Heron. Now Summers. Keeps the movement going. Heron again, prepared to take it on. Just chatting to him before the match, Heron, he said, will you stop saying I'm a veteran? But he is 35 years young. Grayson now. Picks up the pace. Turns, looking for Greenwood, finds Hamer instead, invites Kebby to have a go. We said Kebby's been quiet. Kebby's tackle. Last tackle. Hamer says to Furbank, I'll get in there at dummy half. This is Fox. Drop goal attempt. Yes, one point, Derek Fox. I delayed because Bob Connolly delayed before he gave it. Never any doubt to Derek Fox. Turns away the one point, so vital. Good position in there. It was a quick play of the ball. Snap decision. Thinking all the time. The little general. You're watching Sky Sports. Second in the table. In possession with Trevor Clark. Featherstone seventh. The second division champions and premiership winners. They have acquitted themselves well in the big league. Facing a big test here today. Against this title chasing... Bradford Northern outfit it's the last tackle for them Watson will run it and now kicks inviting Cordell and Powell the ball comes up was it touched referee says no no try he had the chance and I think he knocked on the Cordell it was a beautiful kick from Watson and you'll see the Gibson misses it completely and this would have been a try he just got his fingertips to it oh what a let off for Carl Gibson Completely missed kick that. 
missed it by a mile. Featherston breathed a sigh of relief then. Cordell thought he had the touch on it. Appealed to the referee, who in consultation with his touch judge, wiped it off. Gibson, though, a wild kick. Missed it by Miles. Roebuck now for Featherston. High tackle. Clark disagrees, but the referee must take action soon, surely. Well, I'm glad they're all having a good time out there, knocking each other's head off. That's another one that's just grinned at the referee and said, what, me? Never. You saw that Clark just had a little look across there, and I can tell you it was Derek Fox, the captain, saying, hey, cool it. Just five points the difference, nothing to choose between these two sides. Featherston playing down the hill, what a collision then, Furbank felt it, but picked himself up as though it's just normal everyday life. Tutor with that run, scrambling Bradford defence, penalty Featherston, Gratian interfering at the, play, at the play the ball, holding the man down. Was he con? He's holding him there, no doubt about it. Tutor there, and he flops down, he gets it. In the first instant, Paul Gratian did hold down. In the second instant, the experience of the loose forward Brendan Tutor went to ground without much persuasion. The penalty is given. A vital penalty too. Indeed so, if Maloney kicks this, the gap will be down to three points. It's kicked well all afternoon. It'll set us up for a rousing finale. Maloney then taking his time. This is a vital kick. That's two points to Featherston. They have a lifeline to Featherston. The gap's only three points. Three out of three for Maloney. And interestingly enough, the last time that Bradford were here and were beaten in 1991, a certain Derek Fox kicked well that day, kicking five goals. Now Derek Fox will restart for Bradford. So Bradford ahead by 13 points to 10, but the lead cut. And it's Gary Price with the run. Straight through Heron, almost through Watson, and not through Powell. It's been a forwards day, and that man, Gary H. Price, really has worked hard. But to be fair, to oh, don't drop him, lads. Well done. Steve Martin watching from up here on the television gantry, getting a bird's eye view of his team, trying to get back on terms with Bradford, and they're certainly in the hunt here, Featherston. Gunn, that's a good run. That's a great run from Gunn, but he went without the ball. Now, was that reefed out? If it was, and that man, Hamer, was offside. I thought that was reefed out by Watson. Watch the arm. Yeah, knocks it out clearly. It's a nightmare for the referee, I know. We say that week after week. Fox. The referee has a difficult enough job, doesn't he, to control matches like this without having the added burden of deciding whether it was stolen in the tackle, knocked out, or simply knocked on. Heron, that's a good crunching tackle on Heron from Roebuck. Neil Roebuck, he hasn't missed a match all season, been involved all the way through. Fox's chip ahead again, just spins off the turf. He wouldn't be happy with that, Derek Fox, far too strong. Just checking that statistic on Roebuck, he has missed one, but only one this season. He's been a vital part of this Featherston charge to seventh place in the big league. As has Ikram Butt. And so too is Richard Gunn, the captain. 
It's vital now that Featherston play out their full six. On the last two occasions, they've spilt the ball early in the tackle count. They can't afford to do that. Ikram Buck was met by Carl Furbank. Buck's head went back, but it was Furbank's shoulder, I think, that caught him. And they just swap a glance and tap each other on the shoulder. Challenge from Furbank was completely fair. This is the last tackle for Featherston. Maloney with the drop goal, and from way out, in awful conditions, Maloney stamps another point on this match. What a classic kick from so far out, right in the middle of the mud. A lot of sand in there, not an easy kick, but he made it look so easy, didn't he? This just didn't scrape over. That is a tremendous one-pointer. He's had a top game. Sailed over the bar, didn't it? Maloney's drop goal. Meanwhile, Greenwood has returned to the fray. This time it's a legitimate substitution, if that be the right word, and Hamer is the man who's gone off. What I mean to say is that it is a substitution that will count on the statistic sheet. I wonder if it will count on the field. I wonder whether Greenwood will play a part and a really big part in winning this match for Bradford. Featherston are chipping away at the lead, aren't they? Rapati, a hat-trick for him last time we were here at Post Office Road against Lee. Featherston have to respect this possession. Oh, oh that, that was my oh, How oh, he got away with that? How on earth did he get away with that? But they did. Lady Luck shining upon them. Surely it's a kick deep now. Daunt. Yeah, there's the kick. It's downhill. It just runs dead. They are very narrow, the in-goal areas here at Post Office Road. No margin for error at all. The main thing is, even though it was a little bit too strong from Brett Daunt, there's Peter Fox. Anxious moments. Only two points in it, he realises. Silly penalty anywhere around in the this vicinity. With the form that Maloney has shown so far in the goal-kicking stakes, it's quite within his reach. They have to play safety first, Bradford now. It's a vital match for them, for Northern at the top of the table, this. Wigan made ground on the leaders, Bradford and Warrington on Friday night. Bradford must come away from here with two points if they possibly can. But Featherston doing all they can to spoil their day. But that's a better run from Gratian. And he's almost through Daunt. He unloads to Shelford, who goes straight over the top of Gibson. And he's still going. And he's got the penalty. Roebuck being pointed out by the referee for the swinging arm. Well, I got the impression that Robert Connolly had two to choose from. The run there. Look at that one. Little left one from the substitute, Neil Robert. But there was one before that that perhaps could have been taken. Carl Gibson. He really should have gone low. He didn't. He elected to go high. Referee said play on. And that is the silly penalty they were talking about. That's a high one from there. Jumping up. I'm not going to get away with that. But here it comes. That was enough. That's Gibson who went high with the tackle. Jumped at Daryl Shelford, who's a tall man. Roebuck's was only a little left hook, wasn't it? But it was big enough. So Derek Fox. Important kick for him now. He's hit the post! Bounces back into play, and Featherson off the hook. Well, you would normally back Fox to kick those. Can Bradford turn it to their advantage? This is Greenwood. The ball bouncing back off the post, it's play on. And so a chance here for Bradford. Powell gets away from one, turns, twists. Saw Clark was there, but couldn't get the ball away. Here's Fox. Switches the direction again to Furbank. He tries to run over the top of Casey. Desperate moments these for Featherston. It's now with Gratian trying to burrow his way to the line. It's the last tackle. Fox will kick across the face of the goal, surely. No, he releases the ball to Heron. He will kick, but straight into the arms of Tutor, who in turn finds Rapati. Rapati has got Simpson outside him. Rapati taking them all on. Great run from the Kiwi. What?
wonderful play from the Kiwi Rapati, but Bradford took the wrong option. Quick hands from Featherstone, this is gun. It's now Matt Callan. He gets away from one. He brushes away from Kevy. Gets away from Gratian. Kevy has him second chance. And so too does Greenwood. End to end. A rousing finish. Malloy charging towards the line. Urged on by this full house of post office road. Soaked to the skin, but loving every minute of it. Roebuck, long pass. Quick hands. They've got the overlap. Simpson is there, couldn't just keep his footing, two to the dummy half, still Featherston roll forward, and still the Bradford defence holds firm, it's the last tackle, it's the turnover, magnificent play from both sides. Great defence from Bradford when needed, we saw a beautiful run from the centre of party, then Matt Kelland on the other side. Super stuff. This is going down to the wire. Featherston making a change, and Graham Southernwood, who's on a loan period here from nearby Castleford, comes on for Richard Gunn. So Southernwood, number 14, is on his debut. Into the second month of a loan spell. Good thinking by Steve Martin, the Featherston coach. Fresh pair of legs could just be what's needed. And they've lost the ball, that'll be a scrum. Tempers are fraying. This is how important these two points are in the league. Featherson desperate to get into the top eight position for the playoffs at the end of this season. Bradford, of course, still with their sights on the championship. And the referee Connolly holds the clock up and will debate the issue with his touch judge. Well, was it a flop there by the 15, Roebuck? Either way, the ball came clear. The scrum will go down. Players just went right in. They didn't like that. Paul Gration wasn't too happy with the flop. Neither were the rest of the players. It's hard to tell whether one's going to pull them out or one is going to join in. Been a tough one all the way through. No prisoners. So what will the referee decide here? He wants a word with Malloy and Fox. Now Fox is the Bradford captain. I wonder whether in Gunn's absence, Malloy has taken the captaincy. And he's telling them both to tell their players to calm it down. What will his decision be? Oh, penalty Bradford. Well, that will not get Mr. Connolly much in the popularity stakes here at Featherston. Well, a touch surge has obviously come on and stated the obvious, which is Neil Roebuck coming in for the flop. The crowd go berserk. This little compact ground, you'll see it here, the tackle has been made. And the ironic thing about it is, is that the ball was lost before Roebuck even attempted to drop on. Wasted opportunity by Featherston. Roy Powell. Well, hold on to your hats. This will be some climax to this game. Never mind your hat. What about your teeth? There's some <laughs> been some big ones here. Greenwood tries to get away from Tuta, Rapati, Malloy and company. Lost the ball then. Touch judge looked inside, waved the flag. Knock on is the decision. Two substitutes look at each other, Dave Herron and Adam Greenwood. He said, hang on to it, by all accounts. There you can see Rapati just pushed it out on the blind side of the referee. It's been a nightmare for the ref today. Was watching the line as it was forming up. Meanwhile, there's a little chip and chase. There's a chance here. Oh, and that was so close. It was Simpson who was steaming down, and Watson got to it first. Superb play from Featherston. They win the scrum, they realise there's no full back. Watson had to go all the way back there. It was Corbin who got the Corbin point of got it. the tick, kick. But great thinking from Featherston. 
they know that they're going to get the ball back again and they're running downhill and they certainly have got their tails up after the past quarter hour 20 minutes or so Bradford are on the rack Southernwood gets the ball away to Ikram Butt it's a big test here of Bradford's championship aspirations had almost half an hour look at the possession now with about 10 minutes left this game Featherston really have got to just make sure that they play out the six use the kick that's play on surely the crowd going berserk they've just got to drive and then on the last one apply the pressure so that perhaps there it is the high kick but has it got too much on it wow that was a great take behind his own line Summers it was beautiful take from Summers Callender committed himself it's been crunch time all the way around forwards three quarters nothing has been spared and the crafty Derek Fox taking his time Grayson well this is quite a game isn't it in awful conditions the most dreadful conditions and these two sides rising to the occasion two points the gap Clark didn't like the challenge from Callum Watson Heron is there get out the way Watson he says and it was an obstruction says referee Connolly Fox a dancing run from Fox now Kebby they've watched him closely he scored a tremendous long-range effort against them at Odsall and he's just dropped the ball and not only that he played the ball to himself on the last tackle Fox was screaming for the kick that'll be the turnover instead of perhaps the kick out that Fox was looking for he was screaming at the winger and the winger took no notice and played it to himself on the last it's Featherston's turn to try and get out of the danger zone and Ikram Butt hangs on to that ball despite the pressure from Greenwood and Watson Summers is now playing at full back Watson has moved up into the attack Bradford desperate for the two points Featherston would like nothing better than to lick them today and knock them off their championship course Dort, the man to replace Derek Fox gets it away Tuta, Tuta showed it went through the gap he has a bit of support tries the angle kick Summers is there Price is after it Summers gets it and just couldn't force Neil Summers over the line Oh, what tremendous play. Super play by Brendan Tutor. The kick through. Summers did all the right things. Put his body between the ball and the oncoming players. What a finish. Two points the difference. 11 to Featherston, 13 Bradford. Bradford in possession with Watson. And I think Watson might have taken a left hook then from Malloy. Gets up gingerly, shakes the marbles back into place. Well, if Bradford do go on to win the championship this year, they will remember this day as a day when they showed their true character. And that was a great kick downfield to relieve the pressure from Derek Fox. Let's get out of here. Derek Fox, experience showing. Super kick. Had the win behind him. Realising now that Featherson, although they will win the possession from the head and the feed, it's a long way down. And interesting to see that their winger for Bradford Brimmer Kebby has dropped right back in case of that break. Rapati then from the play the ball makes 15 metres before he's grounded by Heron and Shelford. Here's Malloy. Up to the halfway line, Malloy. It's getting to that point now where Featherson have got to gamble. 
Southernwood. Ball inside to Tuta. Still going Tuta. He takes some bringing down, doesn't he? He's had a strong game. Now Dawes. Featherston rolling forward with Maloney. Back inside to Callan. Callan a dummy but then drops it. It's dry weather football that these two are playing at times and it really is dangerous stuff with the ball like a bar of soap. Well, it was interfered with there. You could see Powell had got his arms involved with it. And in these slippery conditions, just grabbing at the arm will make the ball spill out. We've got to pay credit to Featherson. They've got to try something now. Cordle for Bradford. Great challenge by Price. Oh, that was a gamble there. Cordell went right off the mark, well away from it. He could have been penalised for that. Bradford penned in their own quarter, and Fox kicks downfield for territory. That's a super kick again. Gibson must keep that in play. Summers is the man who's moved up. Kebby is there, but the tackle is made by Shelford. Copybook stuff from Shelford. Well, full credit to both sides in very, very tricky conditions. They've given us a game and a half. Have indeed. It takes some beating for excitement. Rapati keeps the ball alive. Simpson. Fleet-footed Simpson. Dances to the halfway line. Heron, the man who pulled him down. Roebuck, Tuta. Has he the key? He's dropped it. Once again, you can see quite clearly Tudor trying to spin in the tackle and get it away. All you got to do is just whoop, pull the hand down and that's it. Oh, part of the goal is like a piece of soap, that ball now. Cordell, it's the halfway line for Bradford. The play the ball was taken quickly. And Dow Powell just got to it before Tudor, so it's play on. Jeez, you got to hand it to these forwards, haven't you? Especially... The Featherston lose forward, Brendan Tutor. He has run himself ragged. Run himself to a standstill today. Heron, long ball to Summers. Callum went for the pass from Shelford. Summers gave it to Kebby. Kebby cutting in field. Couldn't get away from Price. Last tackle for Bradford. Fox has got into dummy half. Gets the ball away to Heron. Inside to Kebby. Keeps the movement going to Fox. But it's Featherston who come up with it, courtesy of Malloy, who's worked hard to. Well, once again, we see Bradford in full control in the Featherston quarter and not applying the pressure with a kick. That's the second occasion. That's not the score, it's the handling errors. The score's 13-11 to Bradford. No one's leaving this small, compact ground, that's for sure. Two minutes to go, Simpson, ball inside to Rapati. Now, was that tackle completed? No, says the referee. If he had shouted held, Rapati should never have released the ball. Casey drives it downfield. There are some tired men out there. Daunt, ball inside, Tuta, he keeps it going, Roebuck. Roebuck trying to force the pace still more. Featherston won't lie down. Clark with a crunching tackle. Oh! Casey went in with the boot and there was a Bradford player down. And immediately Casey looks at the referee and wants Summers to get attention. Summers slid into it and Casey was swinging at it. Oh, dear me. The contact at the same time. Oh, dear me, Casey. To be fair to Casey, he had committed himself for the ball. Summers showing all the bravery in the world. What a brave player. Neil Summers, look at that. Oh. Committed, and you could see the prop forward, Leo Casey, called to the referee straight away. He committed himself for the kick. At the same time as Summers had decided, I'm going down for this ball. They're not out of the woods yet though, Bradford. 
This is Robert now, Dawn, the ball is being fed out wide, Simpson's there. Simpson, there's arms trying to flap at him, hands trying to bring him down. The ball out wide, dab forward, Watson calms it down and surely Bradford will take the six tackles here. Excellent play by Dave Watson. His positioning was absolutely superb. Knew the kick was going to be coming into the corner, he'd move right across. Bradford now, all they have to do is just play it out, play the six. It's not pretty, but it's vital, these two points for Bradford. We're deep in stoppage time, and Fox will kick for the corner. And Gibson will collect, and it's surely the last chance for Featherstone as Gibson picks up pace. Couldn't get away from Fox and Clark. Bradford up. Cannot afford to give away a silly penalty. Messing around like that at the play of the ball, it's a gamble. Featherstone are out on their feet, I think. No wonder both sides must be absolutely exhausted. But to Daunt, to Tutor, Tutor straight into his own substitute, Southernwood, and then stopped on the halfway line. Remember, one point no good to Featherstone. It's a knock on that. It wasn't stolen from him though Tutor seems to think it was he went for the five card trick but I'm afraid the referee wasn't fooled Robert Connolly he got away with it earlier about 10 minutes before which allowed Featherston two points from the penalty it was desperation in my book I thought that that looked very deliberate from Brendan Tutor in the hope perhaps they could get a penalty Watson will surely be in no hurry What guts and determination from both these sides. As I say, if Bradford do pick up that championship pennant at the end of the season, how they will remember this day at Featherstone, which saw them pick up two points in a truly memorable battle against Featherstone Rovers. Francis Maloney, almost perfect with the goal kicking and the drop goal. But Derek Fox likewise on the other side for Bradford Northern and it's Fox on his return to Post Office Road who goes home with the spoils. A great win for Bradford Northern then by 13 points to 11. The tries from Shelford and Watson for Bradford, Ikram Butt for Featherstone, the goal kicking of Maloney and Fox in the end swinging it Bradford Northern's way but a titanic struggle and Bradford keep on course for the big league title now a complete check on this weekend's fixtures in the Stones bit of championship first division witness 12 Wigan 27 on Friday Featherston 11 Bradford Northern 13 today Hulkingston Rovers 20 Wakefield 28 Leeds 22 Salford 16 Harvey Howard sent off there Lee 10 Halifax 32 Sheffield 28, Oldham 14, St Helens 33, Castleford 12, and Warrington 22, Hull 8. The table then at the top of the first division, and it's exactly the same as it was going into Friday's match at Witness. Wins over this weekend for the top three. At the bottom, well, big problems now for Oldham, but Wakefield have eased theirs with the win over Hulkingston Rovers. Into Division 2, Barrow 23, Doncaster 21, Bramley 14, Swinton 18, Dewsbury 12, Keithley 6, Hunslet 12, Whitehaven 38, London 10, Huddersfield 24, Rochdale 24, Batley 12, Rydale York 40, Highfield 16, and Workington 23, Carlisle 16. So, Workington march on at the top of the table. They've consolidated their position. That was their 12th match unbeaten. But vital wins for Huddersfield and Dewsbury, who are back in the promotion picture. At the bottom, a win for Swinton at Bramley keeps the villagers on the foot of the table and Barrow ended Doncaster's nine-match winning sequence. The big league takes a break next weekend because of the Challenge Cup fifth round, but we're back on Friday the 18th of February with Halifax against Warrington, live and exclusive at Thrum Hall at 7 o'clock. 
Also that weekend, we follow Wigan at the top of the table from Central Park, their match against Salford, but note the later time that week. 10.30 for Wigan Salford on Sunday the 20th. And a note for your diary, International Rugby League is on its way to Sky. Wales against France, live and exclusive at Cardiff on Friday the 4th of March at 7 o'clock. Now Boots and All will discuss all the issues of this weekend and no doubt the World Sevens will be on the agenda this Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Wednesday, a